Hello! Welcome to Spiritually Speaking. <laughs> Uh, decoding the lingo of the divine. Uh, my name's Hillary. Ooh. My name's Hillary Raven Porter. I am an integrative healer, an ascension guide, and mentor, and a mystic. And why am I doing this? So I'm doing these videos. Uh, these are new new videos I'm going to be producing here um, called Spiritually Speaking because there's so much lingo out there. There is so many random words and phrases and it can make you feel a little intimidated. It can make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. When truly your path is your path, your spiritual path, everybody's is different, right? But sometimes we would really like to actually have more of an in-depth. Um, I was talking to my partner this morning about how there are words that we use and we have a knowing. like. When you know what a word is, even in like in the English language, and you can't quite put the definition to it, but you know what it is. So this is the difference between wisdom, which is the knowing, it's already what you have inside you, and knowledge, right? The knowledge is like the book learning and all of those things. And sometimes you have this knowing of a word, but you can't quite explain it, or you never actually have looked at it in depth, right? So... Welcome to Spiritually Speaking. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go through different words that you'll hear thrown about, like astral healing, or the etheric body, or the cathetic body. Spiritual awakening, the 3D, the 4D, the 5D, the 12D, crystal healing, acupuncture even. Some people know what acupuncture is. Esoteric, metaphysical. You know, there's like so many words out there. I have like a whole list that... I'm excited to even go deeper with some of these words myself. So what are we going to start with today? Today, we were going to start with spiritual awakening, right? It's, I find this term is bandied around a lot. I mean, I use it all the time, truthfully. But I've started using more of awakening as well, because there is an awakening happening. It's, it is a spiritual awakening, but for some people, they don't see it as a spiritual awakening, even though I feel it is. <laughs> but the awakening that's happening is we're awakening to our original source. We're awake, uh, our awakening to our original soul, right? It's not a reawakening because maybe you haven't been awakened to it before. Before it was just your way of being. And then it got covered up. It got suppressed for whatever reason, sometimes it's for your own safety and your own good. And this happened, right? So that you could survive. Or it was just the culture you're in. But all of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute. I'm seeing through this life of mine. I'm seeing through this matrix that is our, matrix that is our culture. And something doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm on this side of a threshold and I want to step over onto that side of the threshold where I will actually feel more as me, expressed more authentically as me, which will feel nourishing to me. I am bored with my life, but there's this like ennui, this pure boredom. That's not just like, oh, I'll switch it up. Instead of watching Orange is the New Black, I'll watch Mad Men. It's like, no, I'm bored. Like there's something that it's like when you put on a jacket, this just doesn't feel right. Your clothes just don't feel right that day. This is your life no longer feels right upon you. So spiritual awakening. Uh, awakening, as per the definition, regular awakening, regular awakening. Hmm. An act of waking from sleep. An act or a moment of becoming suddenly aware of something. Hmm. Coming into existence or awareness, right? So there we go. That's the awakening. So spiritual awakening is coming into the awareness of this spiritual side, of this oneness, of this connectedness. Now, when I say spiritual, I'm not just talking, I'm not actually talking about religion. Some people, when you're like, when I say I'm a spiritual healer, I'm not, which is kind of a misnomer because I'm not actually healing your spirit. I'm helping you come to awareness of it. But if I say I'm a spiritual mentor, they're like, oh, but I'm not religious. I'm like, you don't have to be religious. I'm not religious. I mean, I was baptized, but my family was never religious. 
I'm not religious, but I believe in a higher power. I believe in the higher self. I believe in the light bodies. I believe in the divine. I believe in this other existence outside of what we can tangibly feel and see tangibly that everybody can see. Like if I put this cup in front, everybody can see this cup. If you are not blind, <laughs> you can see this cup, right? It's here. It's physically here. Hmm? Whereas some people have the ability to see into the other realms. The veils are thin. They can actually see past those veils, right? So spiritual awakening is your initiation on the spiritual path. It's different for everyone. Uh, I recently had a client. Uh, she's in my mentorship program. And she says to me, I thought it would be more. I thought it would be grand and like, bam. But that's the thing. For some people, it is wham, bam, crazy intense. And for some people, it's not. It's more progressive. And my response was, where is this expectation coming from? Is it from the movies? Is it from our culture? That is often where our expectation of what spiritual awakening looks like or should look like, or should feel like. It should be this kundalini, back-arched experience. You're one with the divine. You're into Samdi. Everything is bliss and everything is love and light. Just to let you know, it doesn't always happen that way. And honestly, I don't think I've actually met anybody that it's happened completely like that. It is work. It is hard work. We're going to talk a little bit about the love and light part. So spiritual awakening, um, why does it happen? So it could be a slow progression right? This is a natural evolution of your soul, of your soul, because of a soul contract that you have made in a past or a future timeline. Past or future timeline. This is something that you may have repeated multiple lives. Maybe previously you're actually the opposite. You were completely unspiritual, maybe, or you were religious and you were going against the other people that were spiritual, or you already followed the healing path, or the light worker path through many of your other lives. Maybe you were a witch in another lifetime. Maybe you were a priestess in Egypt, right? There's all of these things that can come about the soul contract. And maybe your awakening happens like the soul contracts are why it happens, but maybe it happens because you haven't been listening. It can be slow and progressive and you're like, oh, things are starting to shift. And maybe you have been nourished within your lifetime with people around you and you've been exposed to these different modalities, to these different ideas, these different concepts, and it just sinks into you and you're like, okay, and it's a slow progression or from birth, right? Or... The divine has been giving you little messages and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I kind of hear you, but no, I'm comfortable over here. And then she comes in again. She's like, hello, what about this? And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I hear you, but no, I'm comfortable over here. But it's really not comfortable. What's comfortable over here is that it doesn't require change. So finally she comes along and she's like, okay, you know what? I gave you a couple chances. This is what you were meant to be doing. This is your path. I'm sorry, but there's going to be no more questioning what you're doing. It's going to be a struggle even more. And then that this is often the situation where there's car accidents, where there's trauma of some kind. Car accidents are a common one, um, which is interesting. But it's like smacking into you. You whip open and you crack open your kundalini spine and your centers to connect into the divine and into the infinite. But it can be any major life experience. It can even be the birth of a child. You are cracking open your root chakra when you are birthing a child. And if you end up having a cesarean, you're cracking open your solar, not your solar plexus, oh my goodness, <laughs> your sacral chakra. So that's pretty intense. That's an opening. A, a divorce. You could have had a death in the family or amongst a loved one. You could have any kind of traumatic event can cause this sudden and then this awakening is happening because you start questioning things. You start seeing things differently. You're seeing through the matrix more. 
some of the physical challenges, so spiritual awakening, uh, some of the physical challenges that come up or can come up can come up because, so you have this light body and light vibrates at a different level than the physical density, right? So your physical body is vibrating at a certain level and your light body is vibrating at another. Now you may hear things out there that say, yes, you have to bring up the vibration of your body to that of your light body. I'm here to tell you that that's not actually physically possible because light vibrates differently than a dense vibration or than a dense object like your body. But what you are trying to achieve is to have your light body and your physical body vibrating in harmony, in a resonance that sounds good together, right? And I was gonna say, let me know if that makes sense, but I'm not live right now. <laughs> but you can also let me know if this makes sense. I would love to hear from you. Any of these topics, like send me a message if you have questions, comments below, please, yes. Um, so yes, so you were trying to, so what happens is a physical body as it's, as it's resonating completely unaligned and not in harmony with your light body, you start getting these physical symptoms, right? And these physical symptoms can come back. There's also physical symptoms that come up because you are shifting from the dense up to higher, up to, because uh, your body is, is able to shift up to a higher resonance, just not as high as the light body, okay? So some of the things that you might notice, your digestion. So your digestion is, it's off and nothing's really helped it. How it's off, you have more food sensitivities. Maybe you're going for a lighter diet. All of a sudden you want really, really fresh food. Processed stuff, no thank you. It just doesn't feel the same. Sugars, no thank you. So you start getting attracted to these certain ways of being. Um, you might also turn vegetarian. So this has just happened recently for me. I tried being vegetarian multiple times in my life and my physical body said, no thank you. My mental body said, yes please, I really want this. But physically I could not. Women tend to go to the side of anemia, and, and men too, but women especially. And so it can be very challenging to get the nutrients that you need from a vegetarian diet. For some people, everybody is made differently. So some people, vegetarian right off the bat, they're amazing, right? But I tried multiple, multiple times. And then all of a sudden, uh, I think it was around the end of November, I was like, I don't want meat anymore. So I went in to the doctor and got things checked out and was like, okay, can we check to make sure everything's tickety-boo? And then as I started getting off of it, like literally, I think I went a month and a half with nothing. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna try a little bite of something. And my body said, no. I was like, here it tastes gross, or here it tastes good. My stomach says, no, thank you. Nothing feels good. My body didn't feel better on it. Um, and I've now landed on basically being pes pescatarian. So fish sometimes and the rest vegetarian. I've never been able to do this throughout my life without getting sick. But my body is now at this level where it's like, no, thank you. So it's kind of bouncing between the fifth and the fourth plane. And as you probably are hearing, I'm using multiple other terms. So I will be also doing videos on some of these other terms. So talking about plane one all the way up to plane five which is an ideology of um, Mikyu Sankey, the esoteric acupuncture uh, that, I that I practice. So when you're going between different realms, all of a sudden different things feel aligned, okay? Another one is heart, heart pain. You might start feeling things, you'll go into the emergency room and be like, what is going on? I feel like I'm having a heart attack, things are tight. And one thing that I always do suggest is yes, physical stuff, you go in and you get checked out to make sure that there's nothing physically there that is possibly to be treated, because it is possible. But there are things that we can feel before the medical world can actually detect them, right? I had kidney, kidney stone. Oh, you're getting all the information today. I had a kidney stone and I could feel it growing before they could even detect it on the ultrasound. That's, we're gonna be, my partner and I are actually gonna be doing a video on that one because that's an interesting whole, we're using uh, Reiki and other things to heal it. And it's, it's, stay tuned. We're gonna actually probably post a video of me getting a session, right? Mm. So the heart, as we're, that's where it starts. The heart is 
the body of that's where the body evolution begins, right? You open the heart and you bring both this physical heart into the energetic realm of the heart and you're putting them together and it's growing and growing and growing. Now, heart-centered practices do not mean that there is no work. It's not all love and light, right? So that's one thing is doing the authentic work. As we are doing the authentic spiritual work, we're not covering it up with just always going, oh, everything is love and light. Nothing is ever a challenge, blah, blah, blah. And then you're suppressing, suppressing, suppressing. No, this can take work. Authentic spirituality, you might start swearing less, but you still might swear. <laughs> you might like to watch a show once in a while. It doesn't mean like, like watching Netflix. You know, like there's these things that will shift in you. But it doesn't have to always be, oh, love and light. And then you have to feel guilty. And there are some um, spiritual, what is it called? Whitewashing? No, spiritual bypass. Spiritual whitewashing washing is the other one. But it's a bypass and it so that you don't have to go deep. You'll actually notice more of a challenge the less of the inner work you do as your spiritual awakening. Okay. Let's see here. Oh. Spiritual awakening versus psychic emergence, psychic awakening. There's not a ton of stuff out there about this, but the gist is spiritual awakening is opening of the heart center, okay? It's closely related to like your psychology, your emotional body to this like 3D realm. Whereas psychic awakening is more about the activation of your pineal gland, which is behind the third eye. Stay tuned for another video. <laughs> um, see, there's all these terms. It's so crazy and we just throw them around and we, this could be like a seven hour video just explaining all the terms as we go. Um, so this is where we look into the realms past our 3D level. This is where we start having the psychic abilities, the intuition, the channeled guidance, these kinds of things, talking to the guides, all of these things. And often the reason why they were like, no, no, but that's spiritual awakening is because they come together, but not for everybody. I believe everybody has the ability to channel. You just need to train it up. It just needs to be toned within you. And some people are more conducive to it than others. Some people are more conducive to playing the piano than others, right? Like it's just what we innately have in us. But I can play the piano. I'm just not going to be as good as like Mozart. It's just what it is. Okay. Last but not least, what are some signs of the spiritual awakening? Now a little list. By list, I mean like 15 points. Number one, you're going to notice I got like hair stuff going on. How about that? Eh? You're going to notice a change in your behavior, but it's going to be a change in your behavior for the better. You're going to be noticing that certain things don't align. Things that are like a waste of time, or f like they're not a waste of time. Let me rephrase that. They feel like a waste of time to you. You're like um, mundane conversations, like small talk. You're really just like this, I can't. I'm getting nothing out of this. Whereas before it might have been okay, might have been fluff. You also might notice that you stop going to the pub. If you like to go out for a drink once in a while, you'll start noticing that alcohol in your system, you like have like the tiniest little bit and you're just, you feel drunk and you're like, this isn't good. And you'll actually have a hangover from it because you don't need that. But alcohol is quite a dense vibration. And when you're up here, anything that you do on the vibrational scale that's lower, it feels gross in the body. I don't know how else to explain it. It's like the clothing that you're just like, oh, this feels like I don't want this anymore. And the, in the beginning, it's challenging because you, it can be challenging because you're like, what do I do with my life? It's like learning a new way of eating, but it's learning a new way, new lifestyle. This can also mean that there are some people that no longer resonate in your life, or you need to say, hey, I still really wanna hang out with you, but I can't do those things anymore. Like they, I, they bring me no joy at all. And I enjoy you still. Um, and then sometimes there are just relationships that no longer fit. And that's okay. It's okay. So shift in priorities and values. Here we go. That was what I was just kind of talking about as well. Going from the material to the spiritual. So you also, you'll go out and let's say, like the things that you purchase, you're just like, oh, I don't really need this. I don't really need that extraneous stuff that really no, serves no actual purpose in my house. This whole downsizing concept or the things, uh, we have a lot of crystals in our house, mm, a lot of crystals as well. <laughs> I have a lot of crystal jewelry. Um, crystals are a big thing, books, but there are certain types of books. There's just certain, you'll notice that how you see things are different than what you, how you saw them before. 
Okay. You can see through the matrix, you're starting to question the things that the media is telling you. Maybe you can't even watch the media anymore. I don't watch the news. I can't. It's too intense. Plus, I emotionally feel what's happening on the other side. So for me, being an empath and being an intuitive, I actually pick up on those things and then it bombards me too much. So I get the news that I need. But then also, knowing that when you are hearing this news, when you're reading this news, you are able to see the control mechanisms behind it and you're able to pick out the pieces of truth if there are any within it. You're able to go, okay, that feels true, that is true, but the rest is just a scare tactic to keep us all in line. And through seeing through the matrix of the culture, you're able to see into the matrix of the divine. So we always talk about seeing out of the matrix and seeing through the matrix, but there's a matrix as well created by the divine. And so you're able to see more of that matrix. It's very beautiful. It's quite iridescent rainbow. Oh, it's just, I can see it right now. Um, you're going to have a deepening sense of self-honesty and personal responsibility. What does that even mean? You're not going to be able to lie. Even little white lies. And anytime you do something that feels out of integrity with yourself, with your aligned morals and values, it comes back to bite you in the butt. Or it doesn't feel good and then you end up switching what you did anyways. And your body just feels discordant and it may show up in digestion again. It may show up in mood, in sleep. It's another thing. There's, oh, see, some of these kind of piggyback on each other. Massive change in your lifestyle choices in alignment with your moral, moral and spiritual values. Some are by choice and some not so much. So we talked about like going out to the pub and maybe going out to the movies. We actually just went to the movies this weekend for my kid lit. And I haven't been in over two years. And I was like, okay, this is sufficient for a while. Like it was a lot. And I did go out and do it for my child. I was wearing earplugs, all of that. Um, and then I came home and had to take a nap because it was actually quite draining on the system because that's it doesn't match where I'm at right now. Um, dining out, you'll notice that where you're choosing to dine out and how you're choosing to dine out. Um, concerts, I love Love going to see one of my favorite DJs and going out dancing and it's amazing or going to a live show. But if it goes past 1030, I'm good. <laughs> I actually, it's not worth it. It doesn't feel worth it. And this was a realization we just came to this fall. We kept on trying to go out to these shows that were like, oh, I love this group. Like, this is so good. Like, Gone Gone Beyond was here. I was like, yay, so good. And we got home and I was like, uh, it was lackluster. I would rather have stayed home and listened to their music on loud in my living room or gone to Dance Temple, which is, so it's finding a way to do the things you still love, but, it, but they'll shift in a new way. So Dance Temple is a Sunday morning dance event. Um, they also have Thursday nights, but they're done by nine. Drug-free, alcohol-free, kids allowed. It's amazing. So that's more in alignment now with myself. And so you find these ways that your lifestyles change. Your food choices. We already talked about that. You'll start having a greater realization of the interconnectedness of all things. You'll feel that connection. You'll see. I have, uh, I talk to plants. Um, and seeing them and being like, oh, hey, how's it going? And like feeling that conversation and that knowing and that wisdom coming from them. I often um, prescribe uh, hugging trees, finding a tree and building a relationship with them because they talk to each other as well. And you'll be able to hear what they're saying and their, yeah, like I said, their wisdom, their comfort, their knowledge, their healing. And you'll notice this interconnectedness. Also, you'll start noticing the cosmic um, collect, cosmic collective consciousness. So you'll start noticing patterns throughout the day of the people that you're interacting with. You're like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And everybody's kind of interacting the same or they're craving the same because there is this level where we are all vibrating together and influencing each other. Okay. The, your life feels false. We talked about this one. Your life feels false. It doesn't fit. It's like your clothes are like, no, I don't want to wear this today. It just doesn't feel good anymore. End of winter, you're like, I'm so done with this winter coat. So your old life feels like this winter coat and it's springtime. And you're just like, done, done, done. Combo seems shallow. So your conversation seems shallow. And you're like, why are we talking about Trump again? You know, that kind of thing. Want to be alone, and you also feel alone. So this is a really big one. You want to be alone, but you want to connect. But you want to connect in a way that isn't shallow. You want to connect to, and shallow isn't a bad word. It just means the surface, right? 
definitions it just means the surface you want to go deeper why am i here what is the point of this existence what is going on with the constellations right now why are people acting crazy why like you want to dig deeper you have this curiosity that has come up so you feel alone because you can't find you or you have not yet found not can't it's possible. You have not yet found your tribe around this, your group that resonates with you, even if it's one or two people, right? Because again, even in the spiritual realms, uh, and there are different types of people. So you won't resonate with everybody. Some people are all love and light. Some people are like, no, I'm ready to do the work. Some people are doing the shadow work. Some people are like, so as, as pol some people are political, some people are spiritual and they're like, rah, rah about the politics. And some people are rah, rah about the spiritual realm, which kind of makes me giggle. You're not wearing those types of clothes. You're not spiritual enough. You're not doing yoga. You're not spiritual enough. You're eating meat. You're not spiritual enough. <laughs> so there's, there's, it's all over the place. Uh, but you want to be left alone, but you don't want to be left alone. Honor the space Take the time to go back into yourself and to do the work and go really think about your actions. And this is part of it. You'll start actually really contemplating. Is this in alignment? Does this feel good? No, this doesn't feel good. Why am I still doing this? And slowly you'll start making those shifts. Uh, new sensations, sensitivities, and superpowers. This kind of ties into that uh, psychic awareness that comes up, but you do get new sensations and sensitivities. The superpowers comes more with the psychic emergence. But the sensitivities, so to food, to other people, because you're becoming more conscious, you're becoming more aware, you're more in tune. So just by being more in tune, you may not have your psychic abilities opening up, but you're able to feel the nuances. You're not bombarded by all these things and these sensations anymore. You're not dulling yourself with as much TV or Netflix. It's funny how instead of saying TV, we say Netflix now. It's funny, eh? Um, you're not dulling yourself with this excess of processed food, with sugar, with um, entertainment, because you're spending more time alone. Yeah. You feel like you're on a threshold. We talked about this at the beginning too. You're like, there's something else. There, I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm stepping over. And when I step over, it's going to be this like, oh, that's it. And that comes, but you feel right now that you're behind this threshold. You desire authenticity and truth. This goes against with your morals and values. But when somebody's not being authentic, you're like, why? Show up in your vulnerability. I'm showing up in mine. And you start showing up more in your vulner vulnerability and more in your truth and expressing where you actually are coming from. Synchronicities. I have a plus, plus, plus beside this one because all of a sudden you'll start noticing. You'll start meeting people and you're like, wait a minute. I met this person and this person relates to that. And this is opening up this connection to here and this connection to here. And then I was thinking about doing an activity the other day and all of a sudden the divine's like here you go and it was like the perfect segue into doing that activity or into an item or into an event or into these things and you're just like what is going on messages from people you'll start thinking about people and then all of a sudden you'll start getting messages from them and just these synchronicities listen to them and the more you listen to them and acknowledge them you're like thanks divine thanks the infinite thanks whatever term you choose to use for the divine the more they come, but she hears you. More wonder and curiosity we talked about and questioning your old beliefs, habits, and ways of being. You're actually going to question them. You're going to be like, hey, wait, this wasn't a very pleasant one in our house, but I, I questioned my mom about Christmas. One, I questioned her, why do we even celebrate Christmas? What is this all about? She's like, because we always have. And then I also asked about the turkey dinner. Why at every family gathering do we have turkey dinner? Easter, which I also don't really celebrate. Christmas, we do turkey dinner. Thanksgiving, we do turkey dinner. Um, anytime there's like a family gathering, we do turkey dinner. In our house, we've started doing, uh, so my kid Lynn and I, we do like turkey tacos. We don't do turkey, but we do tacos now, <laughs> right? So we started turkey tacos, then we went straight to tacos, and now we're just like, okay, what kind of awesomeness? New Year's, we do like uh, banana split party. Everybody brings a topping, right? Bring your favorite topping. So it's looking at it and being like, why, like, why have we always done this? Because we've always done it. Well, that's not an answer. What is the meaning? So again, this goes back to the shallowness. You want that depth. You're like, what is the meaning behind this? And not everything has to have a meaning. Truthfully, there are times where I'm like, I'm done 
looking at the meanings of everything, I'm just going to like peace out for a couple minutes and I'm good. I'm going to recharge. Right. And that's okay. Please do. It's like working out every single day of the week. You take a day off. Sometimes you're just like, you know, you know what? I'm just, I'm not today. I'm not going to meditate every day. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> so spiritual awakening seems like such a small definition, but it's a big definition. And this is just the icing on the cake. A big one I will say that has helped me and that I have seen help many other people is uh, mentorship. So it's finding somebody or often they come to you, putting out the intention out there that you're like, you know what, I really um, am looking for somebody to help guide me within this realm. Because in our culture, so I'm in Victoria, BC, Canada, um, in our culture, we don't really have that unless our parents are spiritual and then they train us, not train us, they teach us in these um, different ways and different terms and different um, pathways of living. Then we don't really have that support in our culture. We're actually, I'm glad this is finally starting come, to come out and to come to light because a lot of us have these abilities. I've had these abilities since I was little, since I was born basically, but my family didn't know anything about it. And so it was easier for me to suppress it than be seen as crazy because that's the other. And now that this is becoming more and more common, it's not seen as so crazy because it's not, it's a reality. And so because this isn't in our culture and this isn't around us, it is helpful to seek out a mentor. My mentor came to me, I don't even know how many years ago now. I was in school and he came to me and I was very blessed because things got very intense. Very, very intense. Uh, I've had multiple people ask me to speak about my experience. So that is also coming eventually. Keep an eye out for that video too. Um, and without that support and the tools that were given to me, um, I would not be, I, I truly believe I would not be where I am today. I would be at some point along my spiritual path, but I would not be to the level that I am here able to help you. Able to, able to show up for you. So search out that mentor, um, ask questions of people, um, and just keep your eyes peeled for, keep your options open, keep your energetic field open for those people to come in, okay? But like anything, do the research, feel who you're comfortable with, um, because there are people that will be more aligned with you in authenticity and truth than those are not that are not, okay? Again, so lovely to be here with you today. Uh, I will be on again shortly with another spiritually speaking decoding the language of the divine. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.